where I fail, Carlo Valley always succeeds. Welcome back to the channel. The sander works as it should, which is awesome. Carlo's actually given me his opinion on my half shaft saga. My opinion is when you look at the words broken, clean, straight, break. Thanks for saving my sander. Massive thanks for sharing your knowledge with me. Now I've actually decided to strip all the front suspension. Really easy to take all this off in one go. Well, it's fair to say that Heidi's engine bay is looking a million times better. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes. This is my beautiful girlfriend, Kat. And today we're out and about running errands in Roger, the plastic Fiesta. Now, if you watched the video before last, you would have seen that I utterly failed to make my DA sander usable so that I could crack on with the engine bay on Heidi, my hearing aid beige Mark II Escort Mordor. But where I fail, Carlo Valley from AR Valley and Sons Precision Engineers always succeeds and he has actually saved my DA sander and we're going down to see him today to pick up said sander. All right, Carlo, welcome back to the channel. Massive thanks for saving my DA sander. Carlo has tapped this thread so that it now accepts, you know, the pads with the thread as they come. I had to buy this pad because I destroyed the last one. He did have to put a couple of washers in between because obviously when I've had a go at drilling this out, I haven't done it dead straight. Um, but yeah, now the sander works as it should, which is awesome. Carlo's actually given me his opinion on my half shaft saga. And you was explaining that it's probably the hardening process that hasn't been done my opinion, correctly. The half shafts have been heat treated too hard, therefore making them brittle. When you look at the way it's broken, it's a clean, straight break, which only happens when metal is really, really hard. My choice of metal, if I was making them, would be EN24. When I came here to drop the sander off the other day, he showed me this book and yeah, he's literally able to tell me exactly what metal those half shafts should be made out of. And it's this this one here, yeah, Usen 24. And um, yeah, it says about the heat treatment and stuff in here as well. So yeah, really interesting. I now feel even less unreasonable to say that those half shafts are faulty, you know? Yeah, they are they're faulty because they've been heat treated too hard. I would have thought that the company should replace both of them, not one of them. Yeah, that's what I think. If it was my job and, and a customer came back to me in this situation, I would replace them both. Yeah, because what I've said to the company is, you know, I'm not gonna be able to trust the half shafts like I want to, even if they do replace both of them. But I'm hoping, you know, clutching at straws, hoping that that pair you know, were faulty for whatever reason, and you've obviously explained that it, it's the heat treatment. So, and then I'm just sort of hoping that the new pair they send me will be heat treated, right? So it's all, it's all like clutching at straws, hoping as it is. So, you know, replacing one and then keeping the other one in there that's obviously been heat, because they would have been heat treated in batches, it's, batches. It's, batches. it's no good. You could end up with the same problem on the other side at some time in the future. Yeah, some people have said to me, just run, RS Ford ones, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens and I will, of course, keep you guys updated. But yeah, Carlo, massive thanks for saving my sander. Not massive good. thanks for sharing your, your knowledge with me. And yeah, as I've said before, if you're anywhere near Uxbridge and you need you know, any sort of precision engineering doing, definitely get in touch with Carlo. I'll leave all his details in the description. A couple of things that Carlo's done for me in the past, which are really handy, um, is like when you need like a threaded adapter, you know, if you've got something going from one thread into another thread and that particular adapter isn't available online or whatever, yeah, Carlo can literally make anything. If you can draw it, Carlo can make it. So, <laughs> so yeah, get in touch with him. But yeah, right now, I know you want to go home, so we're going to get out of your way. Sure. And, uh, I'm sure I'll be back soon for something or other. <laughs>
Hello, into a new day, and I'm round the garage with Heidi, my hearing aid beige model Mark II Escort, and I'm gonna be cracking on with her engine bait in a minute. Now, I do first wanna send a massive thanks and a shout out to a guy called Colin, who recently sent me a care package of stuff. I can't tell you what bits they were, but if you're watching Colin, really, really appreciate it, and uh, them bits are definitely gonna come in handy. Now, another thing to mention is that I spoke to the company that supplied the uprated half shafts for Maud, my other model mark to escort this morning they still seemed adamant that they just want to send me one shaft i spoke to them about what carlo had told me you know his opinion and you know the guy said that it's ridiculous that he can tell that they're brittle based on you know just a video etc etc unless you test the hardness blah, blah blah he also tried to say that he doesn't know for sure that both shafts were put through the hardening process in the same batch um you know <laughs> They might have been in two separate batches and then put together as a pair when I bought the shaft. So yeah, it's, it's ridiculous to be honest. I sort of suggested to him that um, their shafts are weaker than, you know, 40 year old non-RS shafts because that's my experience. And he said, no, they're not weaker than non-RS shafts, but then started banging on about, oh, you know, if you're kicking the clutch all the time and if you're abusing the car, um, because I said to him that the car gets driven hard and, um, you know, I tried to emphasize the fact that it is a road car and that the non-RS shafts lasted eight years, <laughs> you know, driving it the same way as I've driven, you know, the car with their shafts for the year that they lasted. In fact, I went to Santa Pod multiple times on the non-RS shafts over the years, but I never actually went to Santa Pod with the uprated shafts. But yeah, it's just still arguing and arguing and, you know, ultimately... The conclusion is that he's only willing to send me one shaft. During that conversation at some point, I happened to mention that I do social media for a living and then his tune sort of changed a bit and he's now said that he's gonna get back to me either later today or tomorrow and you know tell me his decision whether he's gonna send me a pair or not. To be honest, if he sends me one shaft, I'm definitely not putting them shafts back in the axle. And even if he sends me a pair, um, I'm still thinking that I might just put a set of RS shafts in. But that's enough of that. Let's crack on with Heidi. Now, I've actually decided to strip all the front suspension off of Heidi. It's just going to make it easier for me to get into certain areas. To get this engine bay ready for epoxy primer, you can see all the front suspension over here. Really easy to take all this off in one go on these escorts. You've just got three bolts at the top of the suspension struts each side. Then you've got two bolts each side where the cross member meets the chassis. And then you can just disconnect the anti-roll bar brackets from the front of the chassis. Um, it didn't actually have these bolts. It just had the nuts and bolts here and here. And I had to take a nut and bolt out of the uh, steering knuckle as well. So 13, 14 bolts, all that can be removed in one go. And I'll probably throw that in my dad's garage um, today. And then I can just drop the front of Heidi onto a trolley to get her back in the garage. Um, but yeah, I really wanna crack on with getting this engine bay ready for epoxy primer. I think I'm gonna start by going over again all the bits that i went over before um the bare metal bits which you know were rusty and have started going rusty a little bit and you know once i've tickled them bits there are some bits that i didn't do um like these bits of surface rust here because that's a flat area i wanted to do that with my da sander so yeah i'm gonna tickle over all those bare metal bits and just in general key up all of the flatter areas in the engine bay with my DA sander, obviously you're gonna use, you know, wire brushes on the drill and stuff in whatever areas the DA sander won't get in. And then I think I'm gonna hit those areas with the cure rust stuff. I hit all the flatter areas of the engine bay with my DA sander. And then used wire brushes on the drill to get in the more fiddly areas. With the bonnet bump stop bolts removed, I was able to get to the rust underneath those. And I just kept going round the engine bay with the wire brush and the DA, removing all the surface rust and giving every section a key up. I then gave the engine bay a good hoover and a clean with some panel wipe.
All right, well, I've been at this for absolutely ages. In fact, I just tickled some of the bits off camera, just feathering out some of these, uh, the edges of some of these patches of bare metal. This is one of them jobs where you could literally just keep going forever and ever. Um, but yeah, I've got to draw the line somewhere. The chassis legs are actually quite badly pitted. All this was covered with whatever they did the underneath with. Um, and yeah, I've dug it out. Uh, you know, with the DA, really and truly, you know, things like this, you're only gonna get them perfect if you sandblast them. Um, definitely need to give them chassis legs another degrease because there's still remnants of that stuff. But yeah, I'm drawing the line where it is. On this side, you can see loads of pits, but the cure rust will get in there and at least give some sort of barrier. But yeah, absolute mission. Looks like the weather might turn. Really hope it doesn't. <laughs> seeing as at the moment the car isn't rollable. <laughs> but yeah, I don't want to end up having to do all this again if I end up leaving the car for another couple of weeks. So yeah, in this video, I really want to get the whole engine bay in epoxy primer. And then even if I do see some bits that I want to sort of smooth out and re-epoxy primer, I can do. But yeah, just want to get the whole engine bay in epoxy primer. Not going to worry about this heater bubble for now. I'm still not 100% sure whether I'm going to replace this or just bodge these holes up with fiberglass because to remove that is a bit of a mission and I'll probably have to remove the scuttle panel um, because it sits on top of it. But yeah, for now, I think I'm gonna chuck some cure rust stuff on all the bare metal areas that have got the pits and uh, yeah, then we'll think about trying to get this car rollable <laughs> so we can actually get it back in the garage today. I decided to put some masking tape behind all the holes in the engine bay don't have a paintbrush, I have to use a microfiber cloth. Using a microfiber instead of a paintbrush was very wasteful and the rust converter soon ran out. Here you can see that it started to turn purple as it reacts with the rust. With a spare cross member fitted to Heidi, I was able to get her off the axle stands and then I used one of her front wheels and a trolley to roll her back into her garage. Then I jacked her back up, got her back on some axle stands and removed the cross member. All right, so as you would have seen, I've put the rust converter on this engine bay. I did actually run out of rust converter, but I've just had a delivery of rust converter from my beautiful girlfriend, Kat. She obviously brought me a Costa coffee as well. Standard procedure, but I've already done that. Oh, and I actually found a paintbrush. It's ridiculously big, but it'll do. I'm just gonna chuck some more rust converter on some of the areas in the engine bay, especially the chassis legs down there. Probably should have done them first, and then it might have gone off by the time I had to faff around bolting on my spare cross member and stuff that you would have seen to get this thing back in the garage. But um, yeah, I'm gonna coat some of these bits in some more rust converter and then I can just leave this overnight and come back around tomorrow and primer the whole engine bay. It's fair to say that Heidi's engine bay is looking a million times better now that it's all epoxy primered. There's obviously still work to do in this engine bay. I need to decide whether I'm gonna start cutting the heater bubble out or just fiberglass them holes up. I'm leaning towards fiberglassing them up to be honest, but um, haven't fully decided yet. Obviously still need to tidy up the fiberglass filler that I put in the bottom of the inner wings last time. And I have noticed a couple of bits around the engine bay that are gonna need a bit of a tickle with sandpaper to smooth them. And then I can just chuck another little bit of epoxy primer on those bits. I can still see brush marks from where I did the rust converter yesterday. I'm gonna have a, 
a word with my good friend Rob to see if he thinks that they would get buried with the two-pack primer that's going to go on next. If not, then I'll just smooth out those areas as well and hit them with another coat of epoxy primer. So yeah, still work to do, but I'm so glad that I've now finally got the engine bay in epoxy primer. Uh, you know, where I was leaving it in bare metal and stuff, it inevitably meant that I had to go over those bits again with the wire brushes, which is what I did in this video. But now it's coated and the epoxy primer isn't as porous as some other primers. So yeah, it should stay rust free now. I made sure that I put a good coat on the underneath of these chassis rails. Um, but the chassis rails on the sides here is another place where you can see the brush marks from the rust converter. I think what I'm going to end up doing on these chassis rails is I'm going to roll on some two-pack primer, um, maybe even on this face as well, but definitely on the underneath face. And then the underneath face, I'm going to roll on some gloss black two-pack paint. And then that means that I'll be able to finish those areas myself um, and then, you know, I can bolt the cross member back on and stuff, which I will probably be getting powder coated black. And yeah, I may even leave the roller texture on this face of the chassis rails, but obviously not paint them black. And then when the engine bay gets painted beige, they'll get painted beige as well. I don't necessarily need the chassis rails perfectly flat and shiny like they are on Esther. But yeah, really cool. It's now all one shade of grey. Before I end this video, I want to send another massive thanks out to Carlo for saving my DA sander. Also, another massive thanks out to Colin for the care package. But yeah, if you thought this video was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you're new to keep up to date with all my future uploads. Check my website for merchandise and parts. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram. Massive, massive thanks to all my patrons for your ongoing support. I will, of course, leave all the links to all of that in the description along with my email address for anyone who wants to contact me. But other than that, until next time, thanks for watching.